whoever made this at Yamaha, thank you because it's perfect. <laughs>、so、Chris at E Pianos here today. I've got the Yamaha PSR SX600 and the PSR SX700, and I'm going to be explaining what I think are the most important differences between these two keyboards. If this video has been useful for you, then please do us a favor and press the thumbs up icon below this video and leave a positive comment too. It really helps a small independent shop like us compete against Amazon. And get found on YouTube. Check out the ePianos website for the latest deals and offers on digital pianos and keyboards, and make sure you have a look at our huge selection of pre-owned keyboards, digital pianos, and organs as well. Firstly, a little bit of context for you: the PSR SX range from Yamaha consists of three keyboards:、uh, the 600, the 700, and the SX 900, which is behind me here. But I'll show a picture of it anyway. Um, those three keyboards sit below Yamaha's flagship arranger keyboard, the Genos. The difference in price between SX600 and SX700 does fluctuate a little bit, but it tends to be around four to six hundred pounds. So I'm going to do a quick summary of my conclusions first of all, and then we're going to dig into the details of what the differences are and do some playing as well. So the PSR SX. 600, which I'm going to refer to as the SX600 from now on,、uh, as a standalone keyboard for the price and for its size, has genuinely impressed me with the quality of the sound、uh, and the hardware.、Uh, the hardware, as always from Yamaha, is quality, quality, quality. The knobs, the switches, the buttons—they all feel nice and robust. The chassis itself. Is、uh, stylish and nicely laid out. The controls are all very well laid out. You can have a great deal of fun with this keyboard. But in comparison with the SX700, which is the point of this video after all, the 600 does just begin to feel a little bit like a relic of the past. Why? Because the SX700 is built on a more advanced operating system. Indeed, it's the operating system. That is used on the keyboard above it, the SX900, and the flagship model, the Genos, at the top. The crucial difference with this operating system compared to the one on the 600 is it's controlled with a touchscreen, whereas the 600 is controlled a little bit more like a cash point machine or an ATM, where you have corresponding buttons and dials around the screen. So, along with this、uh, more advanced operating system and the larger screen. And indeed, the chassis that looks like its bigger brother, the SX900. When you sit and you power up SX700, you do feel immediately like you're playing a keyboard that belongs in the upper echelon of Yamaha's Arranger keyboards. And in comparison to the SX600, the 700 just feels like a leap into the future. Okay, that's the summary. Now let's get into the details of what I think are the most important differences between these two keyboards. The chassis, as you can see, they're both quite similar in size,、um, widthways and、uh, heightways, but the SX700 is slightly deeper front to back. The difference in weight between these two models is quite significant as well. The SX600 is 8.1 kilograms, and the 700 is 11.5 kilograms. So the difference in weight of just Over three kilograms, according to the good people at weightofstuff.com, is、uh, roughly the same as three liters of milk, a carry-on suitcase, five basketballs, or a newborn baby.、Um, for viewers in the UK, this is equivalent to about six and a half pints of beer. On the left-hand side of the front panel, the SX600 has two dedicated controls for pitch and modulation, and the SX700 uses a spring-loaded、uh, joystick. But it does have a modulation hold button on there as well. Keys and speakers. Both of these models have 61 keys on there, and they have 15 watt amplifiers with speakers that are built in. A noticeable difference here is that the SX600 has two 12 inch,、uh, 12 centimeter speakers built into it,、um, and the 700 has two 13 centimeter speakers plus. 
two extra five centimeter tweeter speakers. And this most definitely gives the SX700 the, um, the advantage in terms of when you're sat playing it, the sound is much deeper, much richer, and at the top end, it has more clarity. The screens. The sizes of the screens on these two keyboards is significantly different. The SX600 has a 4.3 inch uh, screen on there that is color, but like I said before, it is not a touch screen. Uh, SX700 one is, in comparison, a huge seven inches. And color, it's bright, it's clear, and of course, it's touchscreen. Now this is so important because a great deal of what you do on these keyboards, of how you play them, how you control what's going on, is to do with how it's presented to you through these screens. And there's simply no doubt that having a larger screen that is clearly presented and it isn't restricted to having to correspond to the position of a button around the screen just make things, makes things easier to understand. The voices. Now when I say voices, what I'm actually referring to is not the choirs, but it's just the term I use for the sounds that are built into these keyboards. And this is where there is a major difference between these two keyboards. The SX600 has 850 voices built into it, and the SX700 has 986 uh, voices built into it. Pretty large selection on both of them, isn't it? The thing is, it's not all to do with the quantity of voices. What I'm talking about is the additional 136 voices that you get on the SX700. Um, more of those, indeed more of the whole selection, will consist of the more technologically advanced voices that have filtered down from the top of the range Genos into its big brother, the SX900, and into 700, and fewer of those go into the SX600. These are called, you may have seen them referred to as super articulation, mega voice and suite, etc. And as I say, they filter down from the higher models in the range. These advanced voices allow you to play with more expression, more subtlety and more nuance. In short, this means that your performance will sound more realistic. Now, it's great that the 700 has got these advanced voices built into it, but the SX600, to its credit, will have equivalent voices, but they won't be of those advanced natures. They won't quite have filtered their way down. And I've got a few examples um, where we can compare the two to show you what I'm talking about. So let's start off with just the, the regular piano on SX600. This is the concert grand piano. It's the first sound you get when you turn it on. And let's do just the same on the 700 Concert Grand Piano. So as a pianist, first and foremost, you can feel it through your fingers. There's more variation because we've got an advanced voice, a super articulation piano voice. There's a bit more sparkle just in that piano alone.
and it makes you want to play it. And as a pianist, you know when you've got a large and expansive palette of sound variation, it makes you want to perf it makes you perform a bit better, really. Um, next on the list is uh, the MIDI Grand, which is like an electric piano. Um, and again, it's to do with the nuances of it, with these voices in particular. Here it is on SX600. Same one on 700. And that's just a bit more sparkly, a bit more tuby, perhaps. And again, it, I can just put more into it and get more out of it. 600, with its voices which aren't so advanced, doesn't give me the room to go up and down and play with that sensitivity. Now, these next ones are ones that really emphasize the difference in quality. They really do in these two keyboards. And they're the choirs. So I don't need to say much about these because these do speak for themselves. So I'm just going to play some simple chords with the main choir on 600. <laughs> away because there's a mega difference. Just a simple triad in C for you. What you got on 700 is a real boys and men's choir that has been sampled in the actual um, venue that the boys and men's choir sing in. So it picks up all those little ambient sounds and reverbs as well. Again, these are filtered down from the flagship Genos through the SX900 to the 700, but then stops before it gets onto the 600. The next one is the alto saxophone. Now the organs on SX700 is another category where it really um, elevates itself above the 600. And this is because there's an excellent feature called organ flutes where you can minutely alter the footage uh, of the organ sound just like you could on a traditional two manual organ with the uh, footage levers. And uh, I'll give you an example of that now. And uh, this is another benefit of having a large screen with this advanced operating system because I can go in here and I can open up one of my voices that says organ flutes and go up to the um, 
a menu up here, press voice edit, and I can see this graphic on the screen here. And I can play the organ sound. And while I'm playing, I can adjust on the screen the footage. And then I can save it how I like. So really getting into the nitty gritty of changing things. And that's just one of the organs on there. Another one allows me, this is a little bit more like the Lowry organs of old, where I can have a different graphic. And indeed it looks, it's styled to look like that uh, old organ. And again, it's the details that um, you get on this, on these advanced voices that I'm talking about, where you get the key clicks that you would have got on the traditional organ. And again, um, making alterations to the footage while I play. And I can save those in there. Now the organ on SX600 um, is good. I can make some changes to it, but I just don't get that fantastic vintage style graphic on there with the footage that I can just slide with my finger. SX700 also has a much larger selection of uh, vintage guitar sounds, so 50s and 60s guitar sounds like this. So great for things like Hank Marvin, The Shadows, that sort of thing. So coming to another one of the huge differences in the voice selection on these keyboards is the orchestral strings. Now SX600 does have some nice string variations on it, but the SX700 in comparison actually has samples from the Seattle Symphony Orchestra. And again, these are voices that are advanced in how they've been sampled they start at the top of the Genos, top of the range, go to the SX900, into the 700, and they don't go into the 600. Let's compare the sounds now. Concert strings on 600. Concert strings on uh, the SX700. And you have to forgive me for embellishing that slightly, but you do get carried away. When you've got more variation, it's inspiring to play like that because you play gently and you really get a different type of response. It's as if the violinist and the cello players are just lightly pulling their bows over the strings. So major difference in the orchestral strings between these two keyboards. Now don't discount the importance of the SX700's um, 
bigger selection of voices in some of the lesser used categories like brass and woodwinds, choir pads and bass guitar and drums. Remember, it's these voices that make up the backing styles, the rhythms and accompaniments that play along with you. The more variation that the keyboard has to choose from, the more authentic and realistic sounding the style of music will be. So if you want to play something that's by Hank Marvin in the shadows, it has the correct voices. If you want to play a country song, it's got brush drums on there. Um, it's, all, it's got a good selection, a bigger selection SX600, so the styles give you more variation and are more authentic. This is particularly important if you're a creative person and you want to write music, you want to write songs, compose music, because when you want to use those style patterns as a basis for your music, they just sound more individual when you've got more variation in there. Indeed, you can revoice the styles using the, the uh, selection yourself. Don't just leave it all to the keyboard. SX600 doesn't give you as many variations, so you're always gonna be more limited in the type of music you're creating from it. Another important difference between these two to do with voices is SX600 only allows you to layer two voices on top of each other, for example, piano and strings. What I mean is, if I were to choose a piano as my main sound, and then as my secondary sound, choose a uh, string sound, as it, as it is a classic combination, we get something like this. Let's do the same on SX700. Uh, so if I go to regular piano, and I think I might use a slight variation, the slow strings, which build up a little bit uh, slower than the regular strings. Um, now, I'll do the same as I did there. So this is two layers on top of each other. I'm going to bring in that third voice as well and in this case I'm going to choose the uh, boys and men's choir put them on at the same time and just listen to the difference it makes <laughs> easy to get carried away. So for building your own custom sounds, creating your own soundscape, having three layers that you can do is better than having just two layers uh, on SX600. Backing and accompaniment styles. Now this category is quite closely thought and uh, it's, it was a little bit difficult to pick a winner. So while reading through the specification, um, in true British style, I found myself rooting for the underdog for the SX600. And each time I found something that it could do, that the 700 could do, that I didn't realize, I thought, oh, fantastic. Well done, SX600. And if we're actually going on numbers of accompaniments, then the SX600 wins that category because it has 415 styles and accompaniments built in, SX700 uh, only has 400. Okay, that's not a big difference, but remember what I said about how the higher quality selection of voices actually make up the backing styles. The voices are the component parts 
of the backing styles. And in reality, that is the thing that makes the SX700 the superior keyboard when it comes to backings and rhythms. With its wider selection of more advanced voices, including bass and percussion, uh, SX700 is just much better equipped um, to sound more authentic than the 600. And there's also a larger selection of band and song specific backing tracks on here, um, rhythms and accompaniments that is. What I'm talking about is styles that have been made to sound just like real bands or just like the songs that they've written. And some of them are really, really impressive and you can't help but smile when you play them. And I've been sat here most of the afternoon playing with these and each time I, I, I'm just amazed how close they get to the, the real recording of the song. It's clearly made with a lot of love and a lot of passion by musicians to be able to do this. Now I'm going to give you some examples of them. And for the sake of comparison, I'm going to show some on the SX700 that are not on the 600. So starting off with a, uh, a songwriter ballad style, uh, I won't say who it is. Perhaps you can guess in the comments below, write which artist you think this is trying to be like. Another one for you, can you guess? Uh, leave a comment below which artist you think this is supposed to be like. And here's something that's a little bit more like a musical in style. This is using one of the brilliant free play styles they're called, where it doesn't play with any set tempo, it very much reacts to the speed that you're playing, so the music won't rate off, race off ahead of you. You can sort of play and it will follow you. And in the 700 and the 600 actually, there's a real um, 80s focus with some of these uh, styles. And of course, that's where Yamaha made their name in the 80s. And all of these vintage sounds like the, the vintage pads and electric pianos, uh, presumably are still knocking around in the Yamaha warehouse somewhere so they can sample them to the nth degree. And they do it really, really well. Um, so, so with the 80s era, tell me what artist you think this one is supposed to sound like. And here's another classic from the 80s. Um, tell me which one, which artist you think this is supposed to uh, sound like. I can't actually remember his name myself. It's something to do with a, uh, uh, a lump hammer, something like that. Now this next one is actually on both keyboards, but this is probably the one that I, I fell in love with and I can't stop playing and I've been annoying everybody uh, in the office upstairs by playing this all day because it is so authentic to the original recording that I just can't get over it. I can't stop playing it. Um, it's the little passages in between the bars, the, the, the fat sounding bass 
they've got it so right and whoever made this at Yamaha thank you because it's perfect it's absolutely perfect now tell me in the comments please which song is it and which artist just absolutely love that one. So a couple more variations for you um, to give you an indication of what else this keyboard can do. There's so many genres in there. Here's a big band one. So like a Glenn Miller, Jules Holland big band style one. And again, when you hear this, have a listen to the brass and the woodwind and the percussion because it's got this larger selection of voices on there. It can do this and do it really well. So, so all of the shaky trumpets that you heard in there in the percussion, SX700 does it fantastically. Um, another one for you. And again, all these extra voices it's got, it can do something totally different in the Latin style here. But the competition with rhythms and accompaniments between these two keyboards is not over yet because SX600 has some technology in it that SX700 does not, namely the unison and accent feature. The unison and accent feature is it's very cleverly done because it's designed to make the rhythms and accompaniment sound more human and a little less robotic because these types of keyboards can sometimes sound a little bit one-dimensional and like it's a pattern playing over and over again but those of you that play in uh, real bands or groups will know that you're only human and sometimes you play, don't play a note as hard or sometimes you give it a little bit more welly when you play depending on the venue and the feel importantly now accent and uh, sorry unison and accent um, allows you to embellish your performance a little bit almost as if you're playing the keys and you look over at the drummer and you say, mm, I want to play a little bit harder here. Oh, I want to chuck something else in this, just going to put a bit more of a, a beat into it. But you do it through the keys, not through playing a button or a pedal. You do it through the keys itself by either playing harder or playing more notes in quick succession. I'll give you an example of what I mean. So what I'm going to do is play very simply at first with a band, um, simple notation and then I'm going to start ramping it up a little bit and you'll hear the drummer start to join in a bit more and give it a bit more on the crash cymbals and on the rides. So when I started off playing very gently, not very many notes, there was nothing extra in the drums, which is what I wanted. But then as you start giving it a little bit more welly and you play at speed, the drummer starts to give it more energy as well. Another example. And you can uh, alter it slightly as well. Now, you can alter the sensitivity in particular, so the cymbal doesn't react so much to how hard you play, or you can have it very lightly set, so the drummer will give you a little bit more 
if you don't play very hard. But it's a nice way, it's a very clever way to try and make the performance sound a little bit less one-dimensional. Uh, and it works really well. Now the unison and accent feature uh, note is not available for every single style on SX600, but it does tend to be available for the uh, first page of styles anyway, the most prominent um, selection in each category. For those of you that are big users of these types of keyboards and will be familiar with multi-pads, uh, it's important to know that the SX700 is better equipped here as well because it's got 226 multi-pad patterns built in there, whereas SX600 has only got 188. So um, for those of you that don't know, multi-pads are another way of embellishing the whole band performance as well with extra patterns um, by different instruments, brass, woodwind, strings, arpeggios playing with a synth pad or lead, all sorts in there, but SX700 is the winner in that category too. The operating systems. As you may have guessed from my summary at the beginning, the difference in operating systems between these two keyboards for me is probably the biggest and the most important thing. So let's take a closer look at them. So the SX600, as you can see, it's got a nice color screen, but obviously smaller in comparison. It's nice and bright and clear, and you control it using buttons underneath the screen uh, and the data entry wheel here. Now, just because it's not touch screen doesn't mean that it's uh, impossible to use. It just takes a bit of getting used to. And why do I say that? I say it takes a bit of getting used to because we are all used to using touch screen devices now, aren't we? Uh, iPhones, tablets, and what have you. And that's what the SX700 uses. And that's why it's quite difficult to go and use an SX600 and as you've probably seen me in this video a few times, I keep on touching the screen on the 600, expecting it to react. It's almost second nature now. And it takes a bit of getting used to again. Note the large clear color screen. The home page um, being large allows more pertinent information to be displayed. And consequently, you feel more in control of what's going on because it's very visual right here in front of you. The response from the touch screen is um, very quick, just as you'd expect from a touch screen today, and navigating your way around the uh, various menus and submenus is fast and easy. And importantly, managing your song files and your setups is very easy. Um, again, because it's a bigger, clearer screen, it's just much easier to keep on top of things and just as easy as using your smartphone or tablet. Recording and internal storage. Both of these keyboards have a 16 track recorder built into them, which is just fantastic if you are a, a songwriter or a composer of music or a casual diddler. Yes, I said casual diddler. The SX600 has a 20 megabyte internal memory. The SX700 has a one gigabyte internal memory. A different way to think about that, if it doesn't make sense, is the 600 has a um, 20 megabyte internal memory and the SX700 has a 1024 megabyte memory. So 20 megabyte versus 1024 megabytes. So a lot bigger on SX700. What does this mean in practice? It means you're able to store far more of your recordings in particular onto the onboard memory of the 700. People who have dabbled in these types of keyboards and recording on them will know that generally there's two types of recording file that you use, MIDI and WAV. And here's where there's another important difference between these keyboards. The SX600 only allows you to record as a MIDI file to the onboard memory. You can record a WAV file, but you have to do it directly to a USB stick that you plug into the back of the keyboard. You can't store your WAV recordings onto the internal memory. It's just not big enough. SX700 with its much bigger memory does allow you to record both MIDI and WAV files and save them onto the keyboard's hard drive and keep them there because of its much, much bigger memory. This is massively useful for creative people, songwriters, composers, when it comes to just managing your songs and your recordings. Another major difference between these two to do with recordings is SX700 offers something called step recording. And this is where 
um, you can go in and alter your recordings after you've recorded them. So for example, if you've recorded a 45 minute opus and you played a bum note in the last bar, now instead of having to record the entire thing back again, uh, you can just go in to the keyboard and change that bum note slightly so it's correct and then save the recording. Um, this is another massive benefit of having this advanced operating system with the graphic display on the front because you can go in, you can see everything clearly, make the change, save the file to the internal memory. SX600, while you can record on it, you have to do everything as a one shot. So there's no room for making mistakes and then correcting them. You have to get it right first time every time. Connectivity. Both of these keyboards have a USB flash drive connection on the back, the standard flat one for externally storing stuff on a USB stick. You can play back WAV files um, and MIDI files indeed from a USB through both of these keyboards. But remember, the SX600 will not allow you to store WAV files on it, but you can store MIDI files on it because they're very small. SX700, you can store WAV files from a USB stick, transfer it, duplicate it rather, to the onboard memory and keep it on there. SX600 does not have the traditional multi-pin MIDI in and out connections. SX700 does, but both of these will transmit MIDI information via the USB to host cable if you want to. There's no Bluetooth connectivity with either of these keyboards. In conclusion, so like I said in the summary, um, I found myself rooting for the underdog. I think it's just a British thing. And indeed the SX600 uh, is an impressive sounding keyboard that you can have a lot of fun with for sure. But in comparison to the SX600, its bigger brother, which is the purpose of this video after all, the SX600 does feel a little bit like it's stuck in the past. The SX700 with its advanced operating system that's filtered down from the top of the range Genos to the SX900 to this one just feels like it's more like a, you expect an Arranger keyboard to be in the 2020s. Ultimately after playing these two keyboards for a very long time now um, and I've had the 600 at home for a while I just can't go back to the 600, I just can't do it because I keep touching the screen to start with. The operating system just feels too clunky. It's not impossible, but once you've used this Genos operating system, you just can't go back, or I can't go back anyway. The poor SX600, the system on there just doesn't seem to flow like the SX700 one does. And there's nothing worse than being clogged up in a poor operating system when you're trying to create, perform and make music. I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please do us a favor and press the thumbs up icon below this video uh, and leave a positive comment too. It really helps a small town independent shop like us get found on YouTube and for us to compete against uh, the Goliath that is Amazon. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one.